Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth lecture of Guard Duty series and in this lecture we will see how we can do a multi-account management with Guard Duty finding. As an example, how you can manage Guard Duty findings from a centralized hub system, right? So let's say you're working for an organization which has 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 AWS accounts. So it is very difficult for any particular security team to manage all the different specific 50 accounts and see all the findings what we are getting for guard duty, like in IDS, right? So any, any sort of malicious activity is happening into your AWS account for your servers on your network, then it becomes quite difficult for any specific team, especially the security team, to go into all those 50 accounts, try to monitor each of the account and see what kind of malicious activity is happening. Now, we have that provision within AWS where if we have multiple AWS account added to an AWS organization, which is basically a part of an AWS organization, then you will be easily going to manage the findings centrally across your 50 AWS account from one single account. So as you can see over here, Let's say we have three AWS account or one, two, N AWS account. Every account has to be enabled with guard duty. Every account is creating their findings, right? Now, just imagine, right? If I have to monitor all the findings and I don't have a provision to manage it centrally, then it is very difficult for me to understand what kind of uh, malicious activity is happening for production account A, production account B, or staging account A, staging account B right so in order to do it with the best practices model what we do within guard duty we have something called delegated administrator so we create an guard duty administrator account and from that account we manage entire stack of aws account guard duty findings so every account will send their data to centralize guard duty administrator account so now we have one place to look at all the findings from the different aws account as part of the organization now even if let's say uh, you want to send out an invitation which is not part of an organization then you yes you can do that so there is a way to do that too but it's always good practice to have your multiple accounts to be part of an organization where you will get a lot of different benefits as well. A consolidated place for billing. You can control all the policies, SCP, service control policies, and a lot more different stuff. So I hope this clears a lot in terms of how you can manage multiple account conceptual wise. Let me show you how we can do it on practical, right? So this is my one of an AWS account. I have disabled guard duty as of now, but I, I'm going to enable it. But for that, I will show you what exactly I'm trying to do. Now, this is my, you know, parent account. This is 6508, which is my organization account, payer account, basically. If I go to AWS organization, organization, yeah. let me open in a new tab. So I have only one account added to this organization. As you can see, this is one, this is second. Okay. Now, if I go to my Chrome browser, this is my second account, which is LGCTICW2 and account ID is 3757. So these are the two different account. One is the pair account, which is a master account. One is the uh, member account, basically. Now, if you are working with a control tower implementation, then obviously the best practices, it says like you should have a dedicated security account. You should have a dedicated logging account, then network account, and then the shared services account where you can implement your workload. So we will be going to do a series on control tower as well, but let's finish the guard duty series first. And then uh, at certain point of time, we will cover the control tower from you know, from the basics to advanced level two, because control tower is something required for you to understand if you're working as part of a bigger organization, right? 
now like there are like two ways to do it let me go to guard duty get started i'm just enabling it in my master account and it is not necessary that uh, you make the master account as your administrator account no this is not true you can make that as well but it is not a restriction that you have to make this account the payer account as your you know like uh, the guard duty administrator account this is not a good practice since i have only two accounts i'm not following the implementation of aws control tower because i don't have much workload over here that's why i haven't done that part yet so when you click on get started for guard duty enabling you see something called delegated administrator account here you can give the account id of uh, that guard duty administrator account so for example if i want to make the second account as my administrator account for the security then what i will do i will copy the account id let me copy it go over here and just give this id the second account id over here and this will be acting as my administrator guard duty administrator account so first let me enable this because uh, that needs to be there right now if i go to settings you can see over here let me copy paste and one thing uh, this id has to be given from your organization so the account will be assigned the two guard duty roles required by administrator guard duty policy into your organization click on delegate okay so you have authorized an account to supervise the guard duty of your organization on behalf of you you can also revoke i can remove this right now allow delegated administrator to attach relevant permission to enable malware protection as well so if you enable it it will allow to take care of the malware protection as well which is a new scan provided by aws six month back and we have covered this now if i go to my account section on the left hand side account section uh no accounts added over here let me go to this refresh now this account is acting as my guard duty so by default it automatically enabled it because i added the account in the settings section because i have given this as a delegated administrator my guard duty got enabled over here okay so if i go to settings you will see everything as same nothing uh, you know like nothing major added in the administrator account if i go to account section over here because this is an administrator account as you can see this is my parent account already added via organization and status over here is not a member so if i select this go to actions let's add it to the member section okay enabling in progress it will take a bit of time let me just refresh the browser should be enabled quickly enabled s3 protection malware kubernetes everything is like now you will see the status okay so that's one way of adding your uh, aws different accounts to your administrator account you can also do that by giving the invitation add accounts by invitation so give the account id email address and then uh, you can uh, you know like in click next and invite your account id that needs to be added and scanned via guard duty you can also upload the list if you have let's say hundreds of accounts so you have to give uh, the format over here and then you can upload and add everything to this guard duty administrator so that's second way of adding your accounts perfect now uh, th these are the two ways right so if you go to settings and now i'm into the administrator account i want to see my findings as well as well as the other findings so for this account as you know like i can generate a sample finding it will generate a sample finding over here let me go back to my parent account in settings and over here let's generate a sample finding so ideally all the findings that we are generating over here we should be able to see in 
guard duty administrator console as well so obviously you will see all the sections all the vulnerabilities or whatever the scanning is happening in this account as well as in the guard duty administrator console so let me go back let's see so here we have 230 right now let me check something over here this is coming for 6508 account id right which is my parent account this is administrator account which is 3757 now if i just try to you know filter it out let me copy this the local account id apply we'll be able to see all detail over here and again if i filter out with the other account id which is my parent account I'll be able to see all those findings too. Copy this. So it's always better to send all these data to SIM, one of the same tool like Splunk or Sentinel, Microsoft Sentinel or Datadog, all the same tools that is basically easy to use. Now, once we have all the findings present from different account to this guard duty administrator account, what security team will do or whoever is managing the guard duty as an administrator, they will go ahead and either check all the detection over here, whether it is a malware attack or let's say I am access keys got compromised, something like that. Based upon all those stuff, they will go ahead and take actions, right? You can also remediate those findings too. Now again, go back to our account section. Just wanted to show you again, this is where you will see everything. I mean, uh, when it it is enabled via organization, if you do it addition by invitations, then it will be like, uh, the type will be like your invitation, not via organization, but it's always better as part of the best practices. You should go with organization, right? Now you can disassociate the accounts, enable S3 protection and all the malware protection and everything. So that is uh, obviously it's there as part of uh, the integration of multiple accounts into one account, which makes the life easier for anybody to monitor and take the actions accordingly. So that was it for this particular video. I hope this clears a lot in terms of how you can manage multiple accounts for uh, your organization. So play around with this particular concept Try to create multiple accounts and enable guard duty. Create one account as an administrator account and add other accounts to guard duty. See what all findings you are getting and play around with your remediation process. One of the examples that we covered in our previous lecture. Please out a comment in the comment section if you're facing any issue. I'll be there to help you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.